morning. It's good to be here with you. I get have the honor of leading this morning. Aaron is out of town. And I'll pray for us, and we can stand up and sing some worship. Heavenly Father, I thank you so much for this beautiful Sunday morning. pray that you would bless our time together as we worship and listen and sing your word in Jesus' name. Amen. Welcome to the House of the Lord. It's a joy to be here with you. You may be seated as we, um, I have a few announcements to share with you before we continue with our worship service. Um, one, as you, you came in these sanctuary doors, you should have received a square welcome card, and I invite you, please go ahead and fill it out. We want to know that you're here worshiping with us, and on that welcome card, um, you can put any prayer requests you may have, and how we can be praying for you, uplifting you, encouraging you, 
in your walk with the Lord. Um, do you notice anything different here at church? Purple, Purple. yeah. Purple for the season of Lent. And we're, we started Lent on this Ash Wednesday, and we're continuing our journey through the season of Lent uh, to the cross, to the empty grave, where we see Jesus rise in victory over sin, death, and devil for you and me. Throughout this Lenten season, uh, we're doing this sermon series, or this church-wide study together called the Being Challenge, and we kicked it off um, earlier today. We had Sunday school um, with all the classes focusing in on this specific challenge or this study together. If you're looking for a book or you still need a book, you can talk to Roger or Julie wearing the, the Being Challenge t-shirts, and they can get you hooked up. They can get you the book you need to, to study with us together here at Bethany. Um, another announcement that, uh, involving worship throughout the season of Lent. Um, throughout Lent, we'll have midweek services on Wednesday. So we'll have one at noon and then one and seven in the evening. Before the seven o'clock service, we'll have dinner together. So come um, early uh, Wednesday nights to come eat dinner at six and then come stay for worship at seven o'clock. I've heard that this upcoming Wednesday to get you nice and hungry for the meal that you can look forward to. It's spaghetti. Uh, so it's sponsored by Stephen Ministry. So come eat some spaghetti on Wednesday night at 6 and stay uh, for service at 7 in the evening. A few other opportunities to, to be a part of or support the different ministries that we have going on here in this place. Uh, one way to support our preschool or Mother's Day Out. Um, this upcoming Saturday, the 24th, Mother's Day Out is having a um, different opportunities. They're having a, a daddy-daughter dance, and they're having a mother and son superhero soiree. So if those things sound interesting to you or people that you know, um, you can contact our preschool church office, and they can get you uh, signed up and give you all the information you need for that. Another way to support one of our ministries here is supporting our school. Our school carnival is on March 1st, which is a Friday. 5.30 to 7.30, and so there'll be games, inflatables, uh, face painting, um, all over the building on that Friday night, so I encourage you to come on out. If you have people in your home or your house that would be interested in playing games on Friday night, or if you're a little older and that's not you right now, but you still want to be a part of it, you still want to support it, um, the school is always looking for volunteers to help uh, carry on and put out an event like this, so if you're interested in volunteering, you can contact our church office and they can, or our school office, and they can get you signed up um, for different spots that they need certain volunteers in. And last but not least, if you're a high schooler or if you know a high schooler, um, this summer we're planning to go to LBR. Um, so I, I've never been there myself. I've heard really cool things about it. Uh, the trip this summer for the Kansas district, uh, district wide, is June 2nd through the 7th. If you're interested in LBR, you want to learn a little bit more about it, uh, you can contact Andrea, our new DCE, and she can get you all the info you need. Um, but again, that trip is coming up. Uh, summer will be here before we know it. Uh, June 2nd through the 7th uh, for the trip for LBR. Um, those are all the announcements I have for you this morning. I invite you to rise as we uh, bring praise before our God. We've been singing this song for a few weeks now, but I love how in the season of Lent, as we look to the cross and the way that Jesus led to the cross, because of that, on the work, his work on the cross, we get to sing these kind of things, and how he gave it all, we get to also give it all. So let's sing Jesus Have It All.
church. Jesus, have your church, your love, your bride, the joy for which you freely gave, your life, radiant and white, washed and purified. Jesus, have it all. Jesus, have your word. service this morning in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. It was in the, this triune name of God that we were baptized, the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. As we begin our Lenten journey, we remember our baptism. We remember we are washed and forgiven. We remember we were made members of God's family. Remember, we are united with Jesus. Though we are baptized united with Jesus, we often act as if we were separated from Jesus. There are times when we fall prey to Satan and his temptations. There are times when sin reigns within us. Still, our Heavenly Father is merciful, and he invites us to draw near to him in repentance, asking for forgiveness. We confess together. Heavenly Father, we have ignored your help in resisting Satan and his temptations. We have sinned against you in our thoughts, words, and actions. Yet our entire lives are lives of repentance. Have mercy on us, forgive our sins, and lead us in righteousness on account of Jesus. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his son, Jesus Christ, to endure temptation, suffering, and death for us and for our salvation. As a call and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We are forgiven. We are baptized into Christ. This peace that you have because of Jesus, I want to invite you now to share the peace of the Lord with those sitting next to you. Welcome them into the house of the Lord.
I invite you to return to your pew, and you may be seated as we continue our service with readings from God's Word. Our first reading this morning comes from 1 Timothy chapter 4, beginning at the 6th verse. If you put these things before the brothers, you'll be a good servant of, Jesus, of Christ Jesus, being trained in the words of faith and of the good doctrine that you have followed. Have nothing to do with irreverent, silly myths. Rather, train yourself for godliness. For while bodily training is of some value, godliness is of value in every way, as it holds promise for the present life and also for the life to come. The saying is trustworthy and deserving of full acceptance. For to this end we toil and strive, because we have our hope set on the living God, who is the Savior of all people, especially those who believe. Command and teach these things. Let no one despise you for your youth, but set the believers an example in speech, in conduct, in love, in faith, in purity. Until I come, devote yourself to the public reading of Scripture, to exhortation, to teaching. Do not neglect the gift you have, which was given you by prophecy, when the council of the elders laid their hands on you. Practice these things, immerse yourself in them, so that all may see your progress. Keep a close watch on yourself and on the teaching. Persist in this, for by so doing, you will save both yourself and your hearers. This is God's word. Please, be, uh, please rise as we continue our service with the reading from the gospel. Our gospel reading today comes from John chapter 13, beginning at the 31st verse. When he was gone, Jesus said, Now is the Son of Man glorified, and God is glorified in him. If God is glorified in him, God will glorify the Son in himself, and will glorify him at once. My children, I will be with you only a little longer. You will look for me, and just as I have told the Jews, so I tell you now. Where I am going, you cannot come. A new command I give you, love one another. As I have loved you, so you must also love one another. By this, all men will know that you are my disciples, if you love one another. This is the gospel of the Lord. I invite you to please be seated as we continue our service with a singing.
Grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. We've begun this journey into the season of Lent. Starting on Ash Wednesday, we're continuing to keep our eyes focused on the cross, focused on the empty grave. We see Jesus rise in victory for you and me. And throughout the season of Lent, we're doing this church-wide study together called the Being Challenge. And I hope the, the first study, if you were in part of it this morning, I hope it was edifying. I hope it was a joyful experience diving into God's Word with other people around you. But the title of this challenge, the Being Challenge, the, the aim and the goal, one of the aims and goals, the focuses of our Christian life is to be like Jesus. On the front of your book, if you, you've seen it, there's a, there's a target there. With, the, with an arrow on the bullseye. And our aim, our goal in life is to be like Jesus, to follow him more closely. And hopefully, this being challenged is an opportunity to dive into God's word with other people around you, to learn better ways, better practices, to be like Jesus, even in our broken world. Throughout this being challenged together, we'll have different challenges. Or, or, or different practices or different habits that we'll focus on together to help us as individuals, to help us as a church follow Jesus more closely, to, to hit that aim, to hit that mark, being like Jesus in this world. But we'll have different challenges or, or different focuses like committing to community or studying scripture, prioritizing prayer, or, or, or seeking solitude. And the last challenge throughout the study is choosing church, finding ways to be the active church in our world. These challenges of habits, of practices, trying to be like Jesus in this world, it isn't easy. It isn't always fun. But being followers of Jesus, these challenges hopefully help us hit the bullseye of being like him, creating habits, creating practices to be like him, in this world. Habits or, or practices, they're important things in our lives. And what I'm going to do for you this morning, I'm going to start my sermon by, I'm going to describe two people for you. I'm going to describe the practices or the daily habits that they do in everyday life, and I want you to think and reflect which person is living a more healthy lifestyle. The first person I'm thinking of, the first person I'm going to describe for you, He's sitting there at his office desk. He looks stressed. He, he looks maybe overworked. This person, he loves his job. It doesn't look like that, but he does. He, he loves his job. He's passionate about his job. He's passionate about what he does. But he doesn't work just the normal 40-hour work week. He, he works way over 40 hours, and he spends a lot of his time at work. For him, work is, is almost like a second home. He gives everything he has to, 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 to do well in his job, to do well in his career. And after a day of a long, hard work, he is absolutely drained. And so he gets home from a long day of work, and he plops down on the couch, and he turns on his, his favorite TV show, and he just sits there and just lounges. And he says to himself as the TV show is on, he says, I don't have enough energy to, to cook something good tonight, so I'm just going to put something greasy in the oven, put it in the air fryer, and then when the air fryer or the oven goes off, I'm going to get up, get my food, and I'm going to find myself right back in this couch, immersed in my favorite TV show. And, and this man, he, he knows that water is good for him, but he likes the taste of soda, or he likes the taste of pop a, a whole lot better. And he doesn't just have one, he has maybe two Three as he is indulging in his favorite TV show. And this man, he, he gets sucked into the TV, he gets sucked into the fantasy land that he's watching, and he looks down at the clock, and it's way past midnight. And he goes to bed way after midnight, he, he wakes up after four or five hours of sleep, and he does it all again. That, that, this is this man's daily habit, his daily practices, his weekly routine. This is what his life looks like. The second person I have to describe to you today is, is someone who lives a little bit differently. Now, and this man, he loves his job too. 
he, he's passionate about what he does in his career, and he, he strives to do a good job at his career. Every single day he goes into work, he goes into the office. And this man, there are times when he works over 40 hours a week, but for the most part, he tries to keep that home work life balance, he keep, tries to keep it in check. He, he tries to leave work at work to spend time with family and friends, people he hasn't talked to in a while. He'll call them up to check in. Hey, how are you doing today? I haven't heard from you in a long time. This man, after a long day of work, he, uh, sitting at the desk, he says, I have to do more than just sit down at this desk, sit at the, behind the computer all day. So he goes to work out. He, he goes to the gym or he goes to run if it's nice outside. And after running, after exercising for a little while, he gets home and says, I have to replenish my carbohydrates. I have to eat something nice. I have to drink water to hydrate myself. And after a long day of work, after a day of exercising, he, he goes to bed early. And he gets the seven or eight hours of sleep. And he feels recovered. He feels refreshed to do that over and over and over again. This is this man's daily habits. And between these two people... I'm sure it's pretty obvious to you that the second man, based on his habits, based on his practices, is living a much healthier lifestyle. The habits or, or the practices that we do on an everyday basis, they form us and they shape us. They reveal who we are. and They reveal how we live in this world. And focusing on fixing our, our poor habits and our earthly life and our material life in this world, I think it's an easy thing for us to identify poor habits that we want to fix. At the beginning of every year, we have these things called New Year resolutions, where, where people look at their lives and say, I want to be healthier in this area, or I want to be healthier in that area. So they set goals to try to set healthier practices to live a healthier lifestyle. Or, or maybe at the beginning of Lent, some people give up things to, to try to live a healthier lifestyle, to try to form healthier habits. So maybe some of you have given up chocolate or, or, or given up the TV or, or given up social media to try to form healthier habits in this world. But focusing on these earthly habits, these things that we do in this material world, those are important. Being healthier physically, that's a good thing. Thing. But our spiritual habits, the author of the book calls them keystone habits, they're much more important. They have a lasting impact on this life we have and the life that we're looking forward to with our God eternally. Our an epistle reading, Paul, he, he gets at this idea that the bodily training is great. As Christians, we're called to also train ourselves in godliness. This is what Paul says. He says, rather, train yourself for godliness. These spiritual practices, these keystone habits that we're talking about. For while bodily training is of some value, so Paul says, earthly training, bodily training, that, those are good things. We, we are called to be healthier in this world. He says they're of good value, but godliness is of value in every way, as it holds promise for the present life and also for the life to come. This saying is trustworthy and deserving of full acceptance. For to this end we toil and strive, because we have our hope set on the living God, who is the Savior of all people, especially of all those who believe. Paul is getting at this idea that training ourselves in godliness, or forming healthy spiritual habits as we live this life that Jesus has given us in this world has a lasting impact. It bleeds over into every aspect of our lives here in this world. And so I described a few people for you in their earthly practices, but I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to describe two different people, and again, I want you to reflect on their spiritual practices, their spiritual habits, and I want you to say to yourself or think to yourself, who is living the more healthy spiritual life that Jesus has given them? This first man before you is somebody who claims 
to be a member of a church in this world. He claims to be a follower of Christ, but on his Sunday mornings, when he's telling people what he did this past weekend, church is very far from his Sunday morning agenda. He, he tells people all these other things that he did on Sunday, everything besides going to church or spending time in God's house. This man that you see before you is someone who, who claims that he has faith in Jesus, claims that he has trust in Jesus. But when he goes through difficult moments in life, his family members, his friends around him see him acting in fear rather than in trust. When Jesus says, give your burdens to me, this man, his prayer life isn't great. He gets overwhelmed by the struggles that he faces, and he fails to pray, giving them to God. He fails to pray for other people around him. This man you see before you is someone who claims to read and, and know what God's word says. But there are many situations in this man's life when he finds himself living contrary to what God's word teaches and to how he calls us to live. This man claims to be close to Jesus, claims to have a relationship with him, but often in his life, he finds himself distant, distant from the life that Jesus has freely given. This is that first man. The, the second man, I, I put a picture of a church here because this man encapsulates what it means to be the church in the world. When people ask him, what did he do on this last Sunday? He, he talks about I went to church. I spent time in God's house, worship and praising Him. When people ask him, how was church this last Sunday? He, he talks about what the readings were about. He, he says, well, the, the pastor talked a long time, but he can tell people what the pastor said. This man, he, he loves not just coming to church to worship, but he loves finding ways to be the church and the world around. He, he talks to people about different ministries he loves to be a part of. Different ministries, he, he loves to volunteer, to give his time, to give his talents, to give his treasures back to God in response to what God has done for him. The second man that I'm describing here loves to pray. He loves to pray for others around him, and he, he loves spending time in prayer with his God and with his Savior, giving his burdens, giving his worries, giving his concerns. This man looks for many opportunities to dive into God's word with other people around him. He loves learning about his Lord. He loves having that relationship with Jesus and always finds ways to grow in understanding, to grow in knowledge of who Jesus is and what Jesus did for him. These two different men that, that I've described, their, their habits, their spiritual practices, again, I think for most of us is pretty obvious. The second person is living a spiritually healthier lifestyle based on the practice, based on the spiritual practices he does, spiritual habits he lives out in this world. These two men are off in the distance, out in the world. These two men are imaginary. But what about you today? What if I asked you, where would you be at on that scale of spiritually healthy or maybe not so much? Where would you place yourself on that spiritually healthy scale based on your own spiritual habits that you live out in your daily and your weekly routines, your daily life? I, I think no matter where you fall on that scale, I think we can all admit we can all live up to the fact that there are times when we don't hit the mark, where we, we don't reflect Jesus well in our words and our actions. There are times that instead of hitting the target of being like Jesus in this world, there are times when we're like these arrows off to the side, completely missing the mark, completely missing the target, finding ourselves straying from God and what he said. There are times, no matter how many great spiritual practices we have, where we miss the mark of being like Jesus in this world. The good news for you and me this morning as we continue our journey through this season of Lent, that God, out of his mercy and grace for you, sent his son Jesus. 
And Jesus came to this world to give you an identity of child of God. He made you a child of God, not because of what you have done, not because of the great practices and the great habits that you formed, but you've been made a child of God because of the work of Jesus for you. And Jesus, out of his great love for you, he went to the cross, taking your mistakes, taking those burdens, taking those times where you've missed the mark, and he bore them on himself, and he died. Three days later, he rose from the grave, showing you the victory that he has over sin, the victory that he has over your mistakes, showing you that you have been set free, and you are forgiven because of the work of Jesus. And because of the work of Jesus, when God looks at you now, he sees a perfect child of God, a forgiven child of God. You are forgiven through the work of Jesus on the cross. And, and as called and claimed people by Jesus, because of the work that he's done for you, we're called to, to live out our identity as children of God in this world. And we don't do so to try to earn our own salvation. We don't live as children of God in this world to try to impress God and show him what great things we're doing. But we live in this world as children of God to try to be like Jesus. Try to reflect the person that we're following. Reflecting the person that we believe in for those neighbors around us who don't know about the love of Jesus for them. Maybe for the person sitting next to you in the pew who's really struggling in their walk with the Lord. We're called to be like Jesus. Be like the person who has called us. Be like the person who has redeemed us. Be like the person who has forgiven us. And throughout these next five or six weeks throughout the season of Lent, we're going to be focusing on different habits, different practices that we can focus on as individuals, we can focus on together as a church to more greatly reflect Jesus in our communities, in our families, in our lives. You are redeemed. You are called by the work of Jesus. You are made a child of God because of what Jesus Christ has done for you. Now may the grace of God, the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, may you guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. Amen. At this time, we have the opportunity to confess our Christian faith together using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I invite you to please rise. And we confess with one voice and one heart, I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We sing. <laughs>
go to our Heavenly Father in prayer. Gracious Lord, we thank you for a chance to gather in your house to worship and praise you. We thank you for the life that you've given us through your son Jesus, and one of the ways that you've given us this life and claimed us as your children is through the gift of baptism. And today we rejoice and celebrate with those remembering the day when they were claimed by you at the font. And today we especially lift up Rick, Addison, Ivy, Miranda, Holly, Todd, Roxanne, Emily, Melanie, and Jamie. Gracious Lord, continue to be with them. Lead them by your spirit that they may live as reflections of you in this world. Gracious Lord, we thank you for the many ministries that take place here at Bethany Lutheran Church School and Preschool, and we thank you for our partnership with Emmanuel Community Outreach, where we can partner with them to collect dental supplies for those people in need in our communities. Father, we pray that through our efforts that others may come to know the love that you have for them through your son, Jesus. We continue to open our ears and our eyes, find ways to be hands and feet of you in our community. Heavenly Father, we thank you for our ministry of confirmation, and we thank you for those confirmants who went through the first communion workshop yesterday, where they learned about communion and the way that you give us your grace, the way that you deliver your mercy to us through your sacraments. Father, continue to be with these confirmands. Allow them to continue to grow in knowledge and understanding of who you are and what you've done for them. Father, as they look forward to their first communion on Monday, Thursday, continue to hold them close. Continue to allow them to find ways to dive into your word, to learn about your promises for them. God of all comfort, God of all peace, Continue to be with those families and individuals who are affected by the shootings in Kansas City this past week at the Kansas City Chiefs Parade. Father, pour out comfort and peace upon them in this difficult time. And then those families who have lost loved ones, allow them in the midst of their sadness and their grief to continue to cling to you, to cling to the life that you've given us through Jesus, a life that is even greater than death. God of all comfort, we ask that you continue to be with those people and individuals that we know who are in need of your healing. Continue to be with Brad and Harriet and Pat. Continue to watch over them, Lord. Give them and their families peace and comfort in this difficult time. Work with the doctors and nurses that are working with them, Lord. And we ask that if it is your will, that they'd receive healing that comes from you. And gracious Lord, we ask that you continue to be with these couples who are expecting a new son or daughter soon. Be with Ryan and Anna, Connor and Sarah, and Molly and me, as we continue to wait the arrival of a new son or daughter in this world. Continue to give these expectant mothers, Molly and Anna and Sarah, continue to give them good health as they await the arrival of their new baby soon. And Father, as these children are brought into this world, we ask that they may be led to your font to be welcomed into your family and kingdom, which has no end. Father, we ask all of this in your Son's holy and precious name. And trusting in your promises, Lord, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. 
and lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, the night he was betrayed, took bread. And after he gave thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples. And he said, take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. The same way also he took the cup after supper, and after he gave thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Bethany, the peace of the Lord be with you always. Thank you. You may be seated, and I want to invite those forward who will be participating in the distribution of the Lord's Supper. And we'll commune you all first, and then we'll commune you all.
please rise. And now that you've seen the true body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, the forgiveness of all your sin, may you now depart in our Savior's peace. Amen. Please pray with me. <clears throat> Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this meal that you prepared before us. This meal where we receive the forgiveness of sins, your grace given to us through your Son. Father, as fed and nourished children of you, as we get ready to depart this place, allow us to be led by your Spirit, to be more like you in our world, that others, through our actions, through our words, may come to know the life that you've given everyone. All who call on the name of Jesus will be saved. Father, we ask this in your Son's holy and precious name. Amen. Here's the blessing of the Lord to you from Numbers chapter 6. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto all of you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you his peace. Amen.